update on our breaking news this morning from the TTC. There was a major delay on line one this morning after a work car got stalled on the tracks at Summer Hill Station. The train is now on its way to Davisville, but the TTC confirmed with us just a few minutes ago that riders are still looking at a delay of about 15 minutes northbound on line one. That's the Young University Spadina line. So keep that in mind if you are heading out and heading northbound. And if you are driving, of course, we're still digging out from yesterday's dumping of snow. A record 18 centimeters of the white stuff fell yesterday. That beats an old record of 12.4 centimeters. A new forum poll suggests Torontonians think that we can do better when it comes to snow removal. The poll found that half of Torontonians are unsatisfied with snow removal from sidewalks. And 56% of people want snow cleared from all sidewalks. As for our streets, over half are satisfied with snow. One third of people polled say the snow removal service has been worse this year than previous years. There's one result where there's some more agreement there. Nine out of 10 Torontonians want cars parked beside snow banks that are blocking streetcar routes to be fined or towed. And we have a live look this morning at Kensington Market. Look at that Brian Go, our cameraman. Brian, of course, out there trying to help out. Snow removal still underway in the city. So Brian is doing his good deeds, clearing cars and some sidewalks. He got his shovel. He's out there helping out. Remember, keep your car. And call 311 if you need to contact the city. <laughs> Don't be out there when Brian's driving. I was shoveling, rather, because that's what you're going to get. Some of that. So call 311, of course, if you need any assistance there. It is 635 here on BT. A sudden death in Oshawa now being investigated as a homicide this morning. Police called to a home on Langford Street at about 730 last night regarding a 21-year-old male with life-threatening injuries. The officers found the victim with obvious signs of trauma. He was pronounced dead on scene. The forensics unit was called in and investigators are looking for anyone who may have video of the area. If you can help, you're being asked to call Durham Regional Police or Crime Stoppers. The much-anticipated summit between the U.S. and North Korea ends abruptly after the two sides failed to strike a deal on denuclearization. A President Donald Trump says the North asked for something the U.S. simply could not agree to. Basically, uh, they wanted the sanctions lifted in their entirety, and we couldn't do that. <laughs> they were willing to denuke a large portion of the areas that we wanted, but we couldn't give up all of the sanctions for that. Trump and Kim Jong-un called off what was supposed to be a working lunch to end their meetings after it was clear that they were miles apart in negotiations. The president said Kim had demanded the lifting of all international sanctions against the North in exchange for Pyongyang shuttering a nuclear facility. North Korea apparently refused a call to scrap its entire nuclear program. President Trump is now en route back to the U.S. and will be in Washington later tonight. There are no firm plans for a third summit. And while in Vietnam, Trump also responding to the congressional testimony of Michael Cohen, Trump calling it a fake hearing and his former personal lawyer a liar. But Trump also says Cohen got one thing right, that he did not conspire with Russia to win the 2016 election. I call it the Russian witch hunt. I now add the word hoax. It's a very, very bad thing for our country. But um, I was impressed with the fact that he uh, when you know, because the most important question up there was the one on collusion. And he said he saw no collusion. So we'll see what happens. But it was pretty shameful, I think. Well, during his testimony, Cohen called Trump a con man, a cheat and a racist. He also leveled new allegations of wrongdoing at his former boss. Today, Cohen will talk behind closed doors to a congressional panel investigating Russia's interference in the 2016 election. Cohen is scheduled to begin a three-year prison sentence for campaign finance violations and lying to Congress.